Yo, what is going on, everybody? It's your boy Grip and Rip Sports Cards back here with another video for you guys today. And in today's video, we're going to be discussing everything about 2024 Tops. Heritage. So before we get into that and everything about Heritage, thank you so much for joining me on this video today. Can we get a minimum of 100 likes on today's video? As that is the best way you can help me grow this channel is by hitting that like button to show your support for all the content that we do make here on a daily basis. And speaking of growing the channel, we are doing a giveaway. We are giving away most likely hobby packs of 2024 Tops Series 1. All you have to do to enter is be publicly subscribed, like this video, turn on the post notifications for all the content you see on the channel, and last, but certainly not least, leave a comment in the comment section on what you're looking forward to this season in the MLB in 2024, and I will pick the winner once we hit six, or I should say eight thousand subscribers, so there is that and of course last but not least channel memberships are available get them on and hit that join tab today if you want to become a member my next channel members only video should be up i would like to say around probably tomorrow i'm probably gonna film it today so probably tomorrow um it's going to be my recent ebay pickups of course from series one and the pirates had i'll say this man <laughs> I don't think there's an, another team out there in, in baseball who has tops cards this year, right? I don't think there's another team out there who has more rookies than the Pirates. Seriously, the Pirates, I kid you not, have at least five or six really solid rookies in this checklist, which I'm actually genuinely, genuinely surprised that they actually um, put all of them in there instead of like holding some for Series 1 or a Series 2. Uh, so yeah, so you're going to see a lot of cool eBay uh, Pittsburgh Pirates uh, un uh, unboxings, a lot of parallels and things like that. So, yeah, I've been definitely on the eBay hunt the last couple weeks, to say the least. So, there is that. And, of course, one last thing before we get into it. The Purely Podcasts. Of course, if you guys missed yesterday's video, I am in a podcast now. And we are aiming, in case you guys didn't you know, hear the announcement yesterday... Um, it's me, Purely Baseball, and the 3 green Greenlight all coming together to record podcasts weekly. We're aiming to do at least two or three a week um, on various different MLB news and things like that. So really, it ultimately just depends on how much news there is during the week to actually make a podcast on. Um, so yeah, the episode one, we're actually recording episode one today. Um, so episode one may very well be up tomorrow. So I'll keep you in, uh, posted on that. Um, it'll be on Apple, Spotify, and the video version will be on YouTube. Um, so stay tuned to that. So if you're in the car on your way to work, you can listen to it on Apple or Spotify if you have it connected to your car with Bluetooth or whatever. Um, so yeah, very happy to be a part of that. Episode 1 should be out tomorrow. We already have the topics we're going to talk about and everything like that. So stay tuned for that. I'll make an official announcement on my community tab when that is out. So stay tuned for that. So... Let's get into the topic at hand in today's video, which is 2024 Tops Maybe Plain Jane Heritage. Now, why I say maybe Plain Jane is because this year, uncompared to like other years, the border of this card, these cards, looks pretty interesting. Right, so they are going to do the 1975 uh, Tops baseball set this year. So that's pretty interesting, and it's going to be that multicolor border. So like for the Yankees, I believe it's it's uh, per or uh, maybe purplish pink and then blue. I don't know. It's like half the border is one color, then the other half is another color. So you know, it there is some life, I should say, to this year's set. So that's pretty interesting there. Um, so. I am honestly not going to call this set Plain Jane for that very reason. And of course, um, next year, uh, not related to Heritage, but next year with 2025 Top Series 1, we're going to be going to the 1990s. So we're going to the 90s now 
in the 35 anniversary, which, I mean, if you're a 90s kid, I mean, I mean, you might be feeling a little bit old now, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, we're going to 1990 next year with that Frank Thomas border rookie, uh, you're at the multicolored border again, so, I'll tell you one thing, we're finally starting to get into that era of, of top baseball where the borders of the cards, at least, at least for uh, the 35th anniversary cards going into Series 1 next year, are going to look really cool. So that's actually, I'm kind of much very looking forward to that. Um, because, of course, we've been, you know, in the 70s and with Heritage and then, of course, with uh, Flagship, we've been in, like, the 80s. So um, pretty interesting to see that. So really cool about that. But let's talk about everything we know so far about Heritage. So Heritage release date, right? So I'll start here. The Heritage release date is not confirmed by any stretch of the imagination, but it is aiming up to be a late April, early May release. So keep that in mind. So typically in years past, Heritage would actually come out in March. Um, in years past, we would have two March releases, opening day or well, now big league, and then we would have Heritage um, in, in uh, March as well. Um, for whatever reason, Fanatics and Tops both decided to scratch that concept, and now they are aiming up to be a a May release. Um, last year it came out like literally the middle of May, or maybe even like the late end of May. Um, so that's you know it is what it is. Listen, I will say this: everything Fanatics touches, they mess up. You know, I don't want to get into the whole Jersey debacle because I already talked about it. But since there's kind of an update on it. The pants, I mean, I'm sure you guys have seen what's going around out there with the see-through pants. I'll tell you one thing. They got to cut that shit out. They, they do. There is absolutely no reason that those pants are see-through, right? I mean, everything seriously Fanatics produces, because here's how this works, right? Nike designed the concept, and then Fanatics produced and manufactured the jerseys and the pants. So, heh, listen, everything Fanatics touches literally turns the crap. They ruined sports cards. They've ruined jerseys, t-shirts. I have seen so many people, which I didn't even know about this because here's the thing. I don't order through Fanatics. I, I only buy through Fanatics if I have to. But everyone's saying online, because of course Fanatics is the topic of controversy um, this week. Um, apparently like graphic t-shirts... Like, if you wash them a couple times, for one, they shrink, and two, the design fades away from the from the design of the shirt. Again, I will preface this. Everything Fanatics touches turns to crap. Not surprised here. And truthfully, looking at the grand scheme of things, when Fanatics took over tops in January of 2022, did you notice how different that sports card collecting was? Uh, since the fact that, you know, like they, I remember vividly coming home from a Morgan Wallen concert back in like June of 2022. I remember just seeing the release date schedule shift and everything that we ever thought tops was about changed in the blink of an eye. I was sitting there to myself like, holy crap, like they really are going to put stadium club in December, which yes, stadium club in case you guys didn't collect before 2022 comes out in July now comes out in December. I don't know why. They want to keep people collecting all year round. It's a terrible idea because once the off season starts, at least in, in my perspective, and here's how I handle things, I really don't buy any baseball cards like boxes. I, I'll buy singles on eBay, but when it comes to boxes, I don't buy them in the off season because really, I mean, I want to recoup my money for series one like we are doing now. So I just find it very weird. But to get back to... Heritage, the rest of the video. Um, I think Heritage, call my bluff, but I think Heritage this year is going to do well. I do. Um, because, of course, the Series 1 rookies are are great, right? There's going to be Series 2 rookies in there. Um, probably Jordan Lawler, because he has a Stars of the MLB, which I can't stand Stars of the MLB inserts. And by the way, speaking of Stars of the MLB inserts... I am finally happy people are calling out Tops and Fanatics to change stars of the MLB. I watched so many openings on, 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 on YouTube of Series 1. Everyone literally hates stars of the MLB. So, hopefully, Tops, you get the memo, 
It probably is too late this year because obviously you already have one of the sets of the three out. But next year, cut the stars of the MLB out of the product and give, how about this? Give exclusive retail inserts to different Target and Walmart and Meyer and things like that. How about that for a change instead of stars of the MLB? I would like that over that. But either way, I digress. We could talk about all that next year. Um, but either way, I think, you know, Series, or I should say Heritage, is going to have a lot of rookies. Um, like I said, Jordan Lawler, um, Pete Crow Armstrong. I'm going to assume Noel V. Marte, since he has a rookie card um, in in Series 1 of, of this insert right here. I literally just pulled this yesterday, this insert right here. Um, so he has a card as well. So those are going to be the big three to collect in Heritage as well. Potentially, I don't know how this is going to work, of Yamamoto. Yamamoto, of course, does not have a baseball card yet. Apparently, rumor has it that he is going to be in big league. Uh, I was actually told that actually yesterday. So, rumor has it that Yamamoto, for all you Dodgers fans, is going to have a, a Dodgers rookie card in big league. Um, as well as Shohei Otani as a card as well. So for all you Dodgers fans, you'll certainly be eating good with Big League when that comes out on uh, the day before opening day. So in case you guys missed that as well, um, Big League comes out the day before opening day, which I believe is the 27th of March. So stay tuned for that. We'll cover all that, of course, when the time is right in a couple weeks. Um, but either way, um, I don't know if Yamamoto will be in update because what they'll do is I, I caught on to this and here's how they work. So basically, any like international rookie that they deem valuable enough, they will basically hold them off until heritage high number. So that way, of course, you have some big names to collect. Um, of course, high number last year, I think, came out, I believe, in November. Um, again, way too late. That set used to come out in August every year. Again, that is way too late for a set to be coming out like that especially considering when Heritage comes out in, like, March or April. I'm um, way, way too late. Way too late. But um, what they'll do, like, Young Ho Lee for the for the Giants, Yariel Rodriguez for the Blue Jays, um, who else? Shoto Iminaga for the Cubs, and Yamamoto most likely are all going to be in high number. But what they could do... Like last year with Anthony Volpe and Jordan Walker, what they did was they made them like super short prints. Basically, one hobby box per case, I do believe, um, had their cards in the box. Um, so again, I hope they don't do that because I remember last year, I, I have made a video on this. People were livid, and I mean livid, at Tops and Fanatics for putting Jordan Walker and Anthony Volpe as short prints as their first official rookie card. Because keep in mind, there was absolutely no cards of these guys before Heritage came out last year. So Heritage was the first mainline rookie card of those two guys, and they kept them behind a short print paywall, or a basically, or even better, a, a, a lottery ticket, really. That's really what it, what it, what it comes down to. And I remember, I people were upset, rightfully so. So I don't think that's going to be the case this year because Yamamoto is, from what I heard, going to be in um, big league as a rookie card. So I'm pretty excited about that. And of course, the last thing I do want to talk about for Heritage is retail expectations. But honestly, I can make a whole 20-minute video talking about this subject in and of itself. Um, but I, I don't want to do that. But basically, I just want to wrap this video up by basically giving my expectation about retail for Heritage. Because, of course, as I have documented very well, <laughs> Heritage and Heritage High Number tend not to sell too well at retail shelves. Because, quite frankly, the odds to pull anything even instrumentably good is very bad. Um, which is kind of the curse of Plain Jane Heritage. And that is kind of where I get the name, Plain Jane Heritage, because there is absolutely nothing really in there to get, except if you buy a hobby box, one guaranteed auto or relic. And that is it. 
Um, parallels, you of course, there's hot boxes, but other than that, um, there are parallels to like $9.99 and things like that. But either way, you know, you get what I'm saying here. There really is no like orange shimmer variation or blue shimmer variation, although they are in monster boxes, or like a, a red shimmer variation or something like that. So there's really no parallels to be had in this set, which I really do think, Tops, if you're listening, I know it's probably too late for, for Heritage, but maybe for High Number, maybe you should expand the Horizons a little bit. Maybe you should actually expand or expand the Horizons a little bit and actually give us like those shimmer chrome-esque cards for parallels. I think that would make the product a hell of a lot better. I, I thoroughly do think that. Uh, because, of course, the only parallel to my acknowledgement um, that you could actually get like a colored background on is the Monster Box exclusive blue shimmer um, parallel, which, of course, aren't numbered, but still pretty cool nonetheless. I do predict... Um, I did say this in another video not too long ago. There are going to be Blaster Box exclusives in Heritage. I don't know what they're going to be, but needless to say, I was told that there are going to be some sort of exclusive something in Blaster Boxes, which I think is going to be a pretty good idea, considering the fact that Hanger Boxes sit like no tomorrow, Blaster Boxes sit horrendously to the point where there's dust collecting on the top of the boxes true story that actually happened in my walmart uh, but the monster boxes sold well for those blues itself because if you get like a you know a jason dominguez blue color match which that would look pretty cool if you ask me a jason dominguez blue color match yankees rookie card that would be pretty sweet if you asked me so guys that is all i got for you that is all i got for you in this video now to wrap this video up we are going to open one Fanatics Blaster Box pack and a Hanger Box of Series 1. In case we missed yesterday's video, in case you missed yesterday's video, I'm going to spoil a little something for you. Look what we pulled yesterday in my Fanatics box. Ellie De La Cruz Blue, or I should say Aqua, card, which goes for like 50 or so bucks. Not bad. I mean, not bad at all. Um... Of course, the first sales were like 70 to 80, but of course, over time, as more people got them, um, it went down, 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 down. I'm not going to sell it. I could if I wanted to. Uh, I'm not going to, though. Um, so I, I do think it's pretty cool to actually get like a top rookie card um, because my other Aquas have been complete dog crap. I'm not going to lie. My other Aquas have been all like third, fourth, fifth year players. Um, so to get actually a, a good card for once is, is, is pretty cool. So let's see what we got here. Um, literally, I think nothing, um, yeah, I don't know what that is. You know what? That could be an autograph. <laughs> Call me crazy. Is that an autograph right there? We could have something good here. I don't know. G-O-G. -G. I don't know what that means because that is the, like, like, abbreviation of this parallel. So we'll see. Um, uh, but I haven't, I don't recognize... I don't recognize that background of, of insert. I I have basically recognized every Henry Davis. That's pretty cool. Um, I basically recognized every parallel um, like or like background of cards, so I know what's gonna what it's gonna be. I don't know what this is though. Um, again, it could be nothing. Huh, well, imagine that. Imagine that if that was autographed, huh? And it is not. So never mind. So. Okay, I, I, I never pulled a Grand Gamers card, I don't think so. Okay, so that's what that looks like. I thought that was an autograph. My fault, false alarm, but either way, um, let's see what this is. Blue Jays Unite. I mean, again, Riley Green stars the MLB. Literally the fifth or sixth one I've actually pulled that already. <laughs> so, again, Fanatics Blaster Box. I mean, I'm not really going to complain. Uh, I'm not going to complain at all because this Blaster Box, that Fanatics Blaster Box, we're still opening with that Ellie card I got. Um... I'm not going to complain because I definitely made my money back on that one box and more. Um, so there's really nothing for me to complain about with this box. Let's get this other hanger box. I I, I have like eight or so of these left. Um, my Walmart didn't have them. Um, I tried to find them this weekend. I'm going to be going to a Target uh, this week. So hopefully I actually find some at Target. I also do want to get a monster box as well. Um, so let's open this. And see what we got in here. Again, still have not pulled a parallel from a hanger box yet. I mean, 
Oh my god, I can't even open this. Let's, hold on here. Hold on. Give me a minute. Give me a minute. All uh, right. Hopefully I don't damage the cards. Here we go. Okay, never mind. Okay, we're good. We're good. We're good. I can't get it out. Here we go. Okay, so let's let's see what we got here just based off the cross section. So we have a backwards card. That's always a good sign. That is always a good sign. At least it's, I would assume, a silver foil, at least, if anything else. Um, we have a Greatest Hits, Stars of the MLB. Um, so we have, I could just tell, we have an 88 right here, or 89 right here, that red border. In another 89. So I'm I'm guaranteeing I'm I'm betting I'm betting you right now that we got a celebration of the kid for one and a, a random 89 insert. I, I I can't tell red border. It could be could be Ellie. I mean, hey, it could be Ellie. It's red or Encarnacion Strand. It could be one of them guys. Um, so we'll have to wait and see. Let's see. Nothing really you know groundbreaking so far. But I'm very interested to see what that backwards card is. If it's a silver foil, I'll take it. I don't care. But I would like it to be numbered, though. Clearly. Because I haven't pulled any parallels at all yet out of this proc. Lika Williams. Uh, Sean Murphy. Devin Williams. CJ Abrams. Nick Gonzalez. Another pirate. Like I said, man, in the earlier in the video, my pirates have a ton of rookies in, in this product. An actual ton. Which, they're not going to have any in Series 2, unfortunately. But, you know, it is what it is. I would have preferred some of them to be held out for Series 2, honestly. So, Dane Raffaella, literally the eighth rookie card I've gotten of his. Actually, no joke. Like, actually. <laughs> Tatis, that's pretty cool. Marco Luciano, that's pretty cool. And Celebration of the Kid, like I said, there it is. So, actually, well, I did kind of predict it. We did get a red. But a Ken Griffey Jr. when he was a red. So, yeah, that's pretty cool, right? We got a Michael Harris, not numbered. So, this is going to be a silver foil. So that's pretty interesting. So yeah, interesting silver foil right there. Um, again, no numbered Jake Rogers and J.P. Crawford. So no numbered and Jeff Bagwell. So again, no numbered. No numbered at all in these hanger boxes. I don't know, man. I've seen some videos. We'll just do this first. Royce Lewis, uh, 2023. Uh, and we got Goldschmidt, Vladdy, Jordan, and Henry Davis. I mean, I, I wouldn't complain about Henry Davis, but... Uh, that is literally, like, the collations are so bad. Connor, Joe, there's Ellie, another Ellie rookie card. Uh, Andy Rodriguez, I mean, so we, we actually, not going to lie, in this hanger box, I think I literally pulled, like, every, like, rookie imaginable except a couple. So, honestly, a hanger box was pretty good. Not going to complain about that. Um, but, again, no parallel. Um, it is what it is. I mean, I'm just accepting my luck is over. Now, after I pulled this, my luck for Series 1 is over. So, either way... I'm getting out of here. Let me know what you think, and I'll see you guys in the next video.